Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from ControlPaint.com, and today let's paint an electric kettle. And as we left off last video, we had our rough line work in place. This would be similar to if you're using the side of your pencil or potentially something like vine charcoal. But since we're working here in Photoshop, I am actually able to just take the opacity and lower it. And what that means is I can make another layer on top. And when I put in my tight lines, I'm going to be able to diminish the visibility of these guidelines because eventually all I want are my tight lines. But we are working from reference. And as you saw, as I zoom in here, I can't really see my reference anymore. So this is a great opportunity to paint with two versions of the same document. So I go window, arrange, new window. Now these are the same image. If I update one, the other will change. So what I do is I can leave my reference right here. And then in this one, I can put it right next to it. But here I'm gonna zoom in and focus on my line work. So what this allows me to do on my second layer here, working on top of my sketched line art, is to get way in close with a very narrow brush and begin to pick out lines. Because here, this is clearly just sort of an indication of the little spout. I need to just pick a line and go for it. So here's where I can get really, really careful and slow. I was working quickly before. That was where I was changing things and shifting things around. But eventually, I was happy with the proportions. So now I am fine to slow down and to be very picky about where my lines go. Sometimes I use the zoom of the camera to help me with the length of the line. So I'll essentially always be drawing the same physical size on my monitor. So if I need to do a longer curve, I'll zoom out a bit. If I need to do a smaller curve, I'll zoom in but my hand is doing essentially the same motion with both examples. Another very useful tool is to rotate the canvas to find an angle that'll really work with your wrist. Especially if you're not using Cintiq, this is very handy. So I'll rotate the document a lot as I work just to help me pull lines that are straighter. Another thing I'll do is to make a new layer so if I don't get a line quite right, I can use free transform and just push it into place. So this is another example of using what I call temp layers to gain a little extra control. Now here, I'm already doing a bad habit. What I need to be doing is looking very closely at the reference itself and drawing what I see. So here I'm considering angles again Sometimes it's okay to draw a little past a line and then erase away where you don't need it. And then for this longer curve, I might make it on its own layer so I can get a nice clean angle and then erase away what I don't need. And in the case of this grip here, there's actually sort of two parallel lines and it's really hard to get the same curve perfect twice. So I'm just going to duplicate that layer, transform it a tiny bit. So little tricks like that could be considered cheating, I suppose, but they are just practical ways to get a little more accuracy than if you're using paper. Because really the end result is what matters. The more you do this, you will improve your hand-eye coordination, but there's really no shame in using certain Photoshop efficiencies. The warp tool is another great option to just nudge things a little bit. Even if you draw a pretty close to correct line, it's always nice just to shift it ever so slightly instead of drawing it a second time.
And then eventually you find yourself with all the lines in place, you're pretty happy with it. And so then it's time to just either lower the opacity of your sketch lines or to hide them completely. And now you've got a nice clean line drawing that you did from observation and you can take it to the painting. So if you wanna draw like this, you're gonna to need to understand the steps that I used. The first of which was using two instances of the same canvas, which allowed me to work on those tight details while still looking at my reference. And then I also drew careful clean lines using the canvas rotation tool to help get my document in line with my arm. So if either of those techniques are unfamiliar to you, make sure to follow the links at the bottom of the video and you can learn all about them. And make sure to stay tuned for part three where we will prepare this for painting and go straight into color. Thanks for watching guys.